Uh, number one <coughs> is that um, it is our assessment that most, well, of course I haven't seen them all, but all, all the forestry investment proposals I've seen simply do not profile risk. They're described as low or insignificant, but you know insurers are in the business of uh, known probabilities of known severities. So I believe that risk is not properly addressed. And um, very simply, you could have two forests, two different parts of the world, or even neighboring forests in a state with the same average loss rate, but have very different uh, variabilities about that average. And that makes them a completely different investment proposition, or even risk proposition. Uh, point two, <clears throat> it's very clear to us, over the work we've been doing um, since we kicked off quite recently, that there is very strong evidence for changing risk profiles. Uh, if we're lucky, we can get 20 or 30 years data and we look at the trends. But what we then do is, is really get rid of most of that data and we look at the last 10 years because that is when the, the curve begins to go up. And it doesn't matter whether you're looking at fire or wind uh, and, and uh, possibly other things. But in our world, those are the two major catastrophic um, risk to forests, unless you're looking at ice storms and, and, uh, and other things. So definitely very, very marked, and we price the risk transfer on that recent trends, because we have to stay ahead of, the, ahead of the curve and not deliver a nice thumping loss to the reinsurers or insurers. Uh, I'm very, very uh, keen on always quoting a recent Chartered Institute of Insurers report that uh, says that in terms of temperature anomalies in the UK, at any rate, the one in a hundred year event in the year 2000 is now reckoned to be one in 12. So that's gone up from 1% frequency to 8% frequency in eight years. It is, <coughs> it is uh, staggering. And of course, temperatures drive sea surface temperatures, hurricanes, winds, moisture, and everything else that you know about. Um, and we see the results in terms of of hurricanes, typhoons, floods, wildland fires, and, and so on. So if we are to price risk effectively, and investors take note, you know, you, you need to really adjust your calculations by these recent trends. And while traditionally forest product managers might feel that a 100-year event is a bit beyond their timeline, if you're into carbon and you're into afforestation, reforestation, it certainly isn't, because you have a liability for 100 years and, and more. And incidentally, we, we work to 100 or 250-year um, cat loads on our, on our models. So pricing is one task. And moving on to the third point, if insurers accept this risk, it's not just on the basis of price. We do try and insist on policies, adaptation policies, whatever you like to call it, that actually makes that forest a better risk. And it is to everybody's benefit. Uh, if nothing else, it reduces the price of the insurance. Um, firefighting plans is the obvious thing, and the commercial forest sector has stacks of experience in that, Chile, South Africa, and uh, believe it or not, Australia. Um, but also things like uh, you know, harvesting techniques to reduce wind impacts, even monitoring for illegal logging and uh, so forth, you know, drainage against flood. So these are all things uh, that we would insist on within the, the forest that is part of the risk we've taken on. And uh, one of the biggest risk indicators to us is the relationships with local people and the stakeholders, and we look at that um, very carefully. So it's not just about pricing, it's about then uh, acting as if you're uninsured afterwards in the best possible way. Uh, point four, um, we feel that insurers can add, actually, add value to the whole forest investment sector uh, by doing what insurers should do, and that is to create and manage portfolios of forests and carbon in, all to, in, in order to reduce risk transfer costs, because obviously you've got a, a different pool, a bigger pool, and if we're looking at carbon and carbon indemnity to uh, operate as a, a global buffer to anybody selling carbon to buyers. So we can add certainly value to the, to the value of those credits um, through, through such a thing. But to create that portfolio, we do need to be involved, and we'll come on to that. So um, this, this involvement could in, uh, enable insurers to uh, 
satisfy the various risk transfer needs of the big investors, which tends to be catastrophic, but remembering my earlier point about the small and medium-sized owners, right down to those groups who have a very low ability to retain risk. So it's all about doing a risk transfer job for the big and the small. Uh, final point, and no blue car jets, that's good. Final point is how is this to be achieved? And um, I would put out the plea that you know, insurers should be involved at the same time you involve bankers, governments, uh, technicians, lawyers, uh, and forest management teams. I mean, that's when we should be brought in to discussions on, on what you want to do and how you want to do it, because we might have something to add to that and perhaps give some indications of, of, of how best to do it from a risk perspective. And ultimately, any investor or owner should be aware of the risk they're running. And um, this will be in order to deliver what I would call our five added value points. Risk profiling, number one, where I started from. Understand your risk. If you, if you want to buy the insurance or not, secondary, but understand your risk. Uh, number two, risk, tr pro risk transfer to the insurance sector. A third, forest adaptation and recommendations to optimize their behavior uh, for the protection of all stakeholders. Um, a point that's been mentioned a few times this morning already, rigorous forest monitoring. And for us, it's a huge benefit to be able to draw on the latest uh, satellite, uh, or satellites and technology to watch our forests, to determine what volumes are standing there, and what's more, to determine when those trees are disappearing. And one sentence, um, all to provide greater certainty and financial sustainability to forestry investment. Thank you.